Smartcast. You are listening to a Mint production brought to you by HD Smartcast. Hello, welcome to Why Not Mint Money. I'm Satya Santanam from Mint's personal finance team. In this podcast, let's talk about the income tax in India that is levied on individuals like you and me. Unless you live under a rock, you must be aware that income tax is charged based on the progressive rate method. It is nothing but taxing more as the income of the taxpayer increases. In India, we have four slabs. For taxable income up to 2.5 lakh rupees, the tax rate is nil. From 2.5 lakh to 5 lakh, it is 5%. For those whose taxable income is between 5 lakh to 10 lakh, the tax rate is 20%. And finally, for those having more than 10 lakh rupees taxable income, the tax rate is 30%. These rates are after certain deductions and exemptions that the taxman allows and comes under the old tax regime. My guest today, Tapati Ghosh, partner at Deloitte, will tell us about how these slabs evolved over the years and is there a case to reassess and rejig them? And also touches upon the new tax regime introduced from April 2020. Let's invite her. Hi, welcome to Why Not Mint Money? A personal finance podcast where we help you understand basic money concepts and share strategies for you to build your wealth. So let's get started on your money journey. Hi, Tapti. Hello, Satya. Great talking to you again. Yeah, I have to tell listeners about your career, Tapti. You know, she has been with Deloitte for almost 30 years. So she has seen all the budget sessions throughout these years. And uh, who other than her to talk about the history of income tax in India? So, Tavti, uh, is budget the most awaited day in the year for you at work? Yes, that's when um, there is a lot of expectations prior to the budget and then recommendations that are made. A lot of activity that precedes the budget, really. And yes, we all look forward to the changes on how the Balancing Act is going to play out. Because uh, there are challenges, of course, that governments face uh, on a year-on-year basis and a whole lot of challenges that need to be addressed. But yes, absolutely, um, it's a day that we look forward to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So have you missed any of the budgets in the last 30 years or you've been there for all the... I wouldn't I wouldn't say the last 30 years. Uh, uh, yeah. Because uh, in the initial days, we weren't so involved mm-hmm. in um, whether the expectations or the recommendations. Uh, it's It's been much more pronounced in the last 20 years or so. But yes, um, it's it's, uh, been uh, exciting times during budget day. Great, great. So, um, let's start with the origin of the income tax in India, Tapti. Um, We hear that the tax was introduced for the first time before the independence itself in 1860 by the finance minister, you know, called Sir James Wilson, that is in the British uh, government. Uh, so, in what form was it and uh, what do you know about it? So, you're right, Satya. Uh, I understand that the income tax in India was first introduced by Sir James Wilson, who served as a finance member of the British Indian government in 1860. Um, the tax was introduced as a temporary measure to help fund the expenses of the British government. And that was during the Sepoy Mutiny of 1857. Uh, It was initially levied on a small percentage of the population and applied only to incomes above a certain threshold. But the tax was later made permanent and expanded to include a larger uh, portion of the population as the government looked for new sources of revenue. As such, the same structure continues to apply today. Right, right. Okay, okay. So, um, though we see so many changes to Income Tax Act every year and sections every year, uh, the Income Tax 1961 seems to be the master document. You know, everywhere we see IT Act 1961. So, what's so special about 1961? What has changed then? You know, why is it very special, such a you know master document? So, it's really shaped uh, the current tax uh, system in India, Satya. The 1961 uh, Income Tax Act, uh, when it was introduced, so it was introduced with significant amendments uh, to the tax structure. Uh, They uh, included introduction of a wealth tax, expansion of the income tax base, 
It also included changes to the corporate tax structure, introduction of new taxes on capital gains, on gifts. And these changes were basically aimed at increasing government revenue and redistributing the wealth uh, amongst the rich and the poor. Uh, And um, I understand that it did uh, lead to a significant increase in overall tax collections by the government and uh, yes, as I said, uh, has shaped the current tax system in India. That's true. Yeah, yeah. So last time uh, when we spoke, you also told about tax rates being as high as 99% in some of those years. You know, could you also elaborate a bit on that point? So you're right. At one point, uh, this was, I think, around 73, 74, when the highest marginal tax rate had gone up to 85%. Uh, combined with the surcharge, the maximum marginal rate of income tax had gone up to 97.75, um, which is uh, absolutely unthinkable in these times. Absolutely. At any time, in fact. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but in 74-75, that was the first time when, uh, you know, they bit the bullet and the finance uh, minister reduced the uh, tax rate uh, from 85 to uh, 70 um, and combined with surcharge, it had come down to 75. But even at that uh, rates, uh, it was a welcome move uh, because it was, of course, a vast improvement over the previous years. At these rates, it does not really augur much well for, uh, you know, a significant amount of compliance. So, yeah, we've seen improvement over the years post that. Yeah, so if somebody earns 100 rupees, then uh, oh, if yeah. 97.5 was the mm. tax rate, then they have to shell out 97.5 to the government and keep only the rest with them. That's that's so yeah, sad. One would rather not work. Absolutely. One would that's... rather not work or earn money. Yeah, so, there's no, there's no incentive to work was. at all. True, true. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Sure. Um, now, uh, fast forward to 1991-92, the beginning of the decade of economic reform. So, before getting into the nitty-gritty, uh, Tapti, do you see that the tax rules adapt to the change in the economic environment? So, yes, uh, there is, uh, of course, the finance ministers over the years have had to look at uh, different uh, uh, economic situations that the country has faced at uh, a certain point in time. At times, when um, the, uh, there was a need for increasing consumption, there was uh, an increase, uh, uh, increased need for employment, and so on. There are different situations uh, that uh, finance ministers have faced, and which plays a, a big role in uh, the way the tax acts have been framed. So, at a high level, um, when I think about the tax rules, maybe some of the key years and the key changes uh, that were made, maybe I could uh, call some of those out. So, at a high level, the minimum rate, tax rate, uh, ranged from 20% and was over the years brought down to 5%. In 1718 financial year, that was a landmark year when the rate was brought down to 5% after more than a decade by the then Finance Minister Arun uh, Jaitley. Uh, the maximum rate, on the other hand, ranged from 50 to 30%, with 30% introduced in 97 98 And it's continued to remain the same till now. Um, that was the same year, that's 97 98 was the same year when the minimum rate also was brought down from 15 to 10%. So that again was a crucial year in the scheme of things. In 1718, again, you know, the current tax structure that we see today was broadly the same as was introduced by Arun Jaitley in uh, 1718 uh, tax year. It came down to three slabs with tax rates uh, ranging from 5 to 30. And the tax threshold starting at 2,50,000 was also introduced. Since then, there's been some small tweaks Mm -hmm. that have been made. And the most prominent of them was a tax rebate of 12,500 that was put in place. Now, 87A, uh, that effectively ensures that those earning up to 5 lakhs do not have a tax liability. So, uh, essentially, there was a need in the economic environment uh, of the country that the lower income group uh, population is given a reprieve. And, uh, you know, things like the dropping of rates from 10 to 5, the introduction of the rebate uh, under 87A, of 12,500, all towards, uh, towards that. 
then again, another landmark thing that was changed initially, we had the Wealth Tax Act that was introduced to basically impose a tax on the wealth, on the richer section of our population with the objective of, again, bringing a parity amongst taxpayers, amongst the rich and the poor. But uh, it did not really yield the revenue that the government uh, had envisaged. So it was abolished uh, in 2015 uh, with effect from 2016-17. And one of the main reasons for that was that the cost incurred for recovering the tax was much more than the benefit that the government uh, received. But again, you know, you can't give away revenue and it has to be compensated in some other way. So in that year, Arun Jaitley replaced the wealth tax with an additional uh, surcharge of 2% on the super rich that had taxable income in excess of one crore. And of course, you know, the last time when we spoke, we spoke about the simplified tax regime that was introduced in the Finance Act of 2020. Right. Where we now have, um, under that scheme, we had more tax labs, lower tax rates for 15 lakhs and below. But then it came came with a whole lot of other catches, I would say, with removal of deductions and exemptions that are uh, otherwise available under the old tax regime. Uh, but of course, uh, the finance minister gave a choice to taxpayers to uh, choose between the new and the existing regime. Understand. So that's those were some of the, um, you know, off the cuff, uh, some of the key changes that uh, uh, you recall and come to mind right away over the years. Yeah, yeah. You know, I, I still remember I was attending for my CA final exams in 2016. And then I got to know that uh, we don't have to prepare for wealth tax anymore because that's been <laughs> taken off. And uh, I have to tell you, I was very happy that, you know, one chapter is completely taken off from the taxation so that I don't have to prepare for it. <laughs> with the CA exams, anything that can be done away with comes as a relief for sure, and Satya. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. But in any case, you know, we didn't see much compliance. Uh, could mm. be on account of the lack of knowledge. Data was not available. It was very cumbersome, you know, uh, mm. valuing, uh, say, gold and uh, other assets that you hold. Yeah. Uh, so it wasn't an easy implementation in a way of uh, uh, for compliance by the taxpayer. Right. And right. again, uh, uh, if, if uh, uh, there is a law, law has to have the teeth, there has to be administration. And uh, the cost uh, for all of that was mm. far higher than the wealth tax that was being, you know, received by the government. So it made one much more easier uh, kind of a sense uh, that you replace it by a surcharge on the super rich. I'm sure that the cost for this income oh, tax would also be much higher, right? Because, you know, the kind of uh, case studies we see, the kind of case laws, you know, the claims and the, you know, appeals that income tax officers make and then the taxpayers make and then... It's again a very big administration, yeah, then, right? Which is true, which is true. What we are seeing over the last couple of years is that uh, the tax department has gone through that reform. There is a significant amount of digitalization. So you don't really need so many uh, people to really implement. It comes through all of the technology that has been put in place. Um, yes, the number of cases that are picked up for scrutiny and appeals also uh, become lower over the years. And I'm speaking in terms of individual tax. There yeah. is a central processing center, uh, the software part of it that the government has uh, been on. Um, you know, they uh, continuously upgraded. They listen to uh, complaints and uh, that come in from the taxpayers and they act on it. So there has been a significant amount of improvement. So administrative cost has not gone up proportionate to the um, increase in possibly the compliances that uh, need to be done uh, across uh, the Tax Act and the rules because of the level of technology that has been brought into play, which, which also means that there is a significant amount of governance uh, in, in the system itself. Uh, mm -hmm. So one has to take that additional caution to ensure that uh, we understand uh, what the laws are and uh, comply accordingly. I understand, yeah. Tapati, uh, look at the minimum and maximum thresholds. Those earning up to 2.5 lakh is exempt from tax. Those earning more than 10 lakh directly falls under the 30% tax bracket. 
these limits 2.5 lakh and 10 lakh haven't changed for almost 10 years at least to the extent of inflation in the economy and you're absolutely to the point uh, uh, satya so uh, the slabs do need to be widened given the slabs correspond to the first of all to the income levels across our population and with inflation the progress of our economy the low medium and the high income groups really need to be redefined for tax purposes so for instance uh, what we knew as a mid income group level say 10 years back uh, would be very different now and the slab of 10 lakhs and above for instance at which the highest rates start should be increased to say at least 20 to 25 lakhs as a, a mid income group uh, would now be at a higher level of income the slabs uh, that are higher and those below should also be accordingly changed uh, but they should really keep it simple uh, with not too many slabs to uh, otherwise it becomes again very unwieldy and complex uh, uh, tax administration and again speaking of uh, inflation you know if i go back to it's really uh, you know the impact of inflation may have in a way been taken care of but no additional relief as such uh, has been given so if i look at uh, say uh, the minimum threshold uh, in um, say 1947 which was i think uh, 2500 and so and if i assume a 7% inflation through the year it's a pure assumption that i'm making of course Mm-hmm. then uh, that tant amounts to about 4 lakh 50 today which is kind of where we are at yeah. now mm-hmm. but uh, you know the income levels have changed and uh, as i mentioned uh, the low medium and high uh, income groups have been redefined and need to find place in the income tax laws as well so that 4 lakh 50 can uh, really do with a change as well understand i mean the 2 lakh 50 that is there today to make yeah, it more yeah. uh, mm-hmm. uh, acceptable of course uh, up to 5 lakhs as we uh, spoke a little while earlier up to mm-hmm. 5 lakhs those income groups do not uh, bear additional tax mm-hmm. but those who are higher have to pay uh, you know the 5% uh, tax on 2.5 to 5 lakhs as well yeah as i said you know while there is some benefit for people in the lower end of the pyramid uh, but for people who are in the mid and higher end there is absolutely no benefit right and also it's also reflecting in the tax rate uh, the minimum tax rate applicable has come down from 10.3 to 5.2% in the last 10 years uh, while the maximum Except has gone up from 30 to 42.7 I and mean, this is including surcharge of course So yeah, I mean, there's definitely a a case to revise. Yeah, and uh, you know, for you're right. So the lowering of the minimum tax rate was required for a few reasons. For instance, uh, the finance ministers over the years have had the objective of increasing the tax base to encourage more individuals to come into the tax system, and also to increase um, and encourage compliance. We've also faced tough economic conditions through the years. Take COVID, for instance, in recent times. and then again tax rates in the neighboring countries are quite low so india cannot afford to be an outlier in the region so the minimum tax rates have been taken uh, care of but yes in latter year uh, maximum rates while they've been lowered if you look at the 20 year range or so effectively with surcharge the uh, effective tax rate is quite high i mean we spoke about uh, a income group of more than 5 crores where it's 42.74% and i guess the main reason for that increase was uh, to garner more revenue for the economy from the you know super rich we again spoke about uh, the lowering of maximum rates uh, which was again required you know the 85% and the 70% which which just does not work at those rates you won't get the compliance that you want to right yeah and we can also uh, we can't just look at the income tax slabs also in isolation no tapti we know, we need to consider the deductions and allowances provided to uh, taxpayers as well so do you think that that really makes a lot of change to the tax at one pace and uh, how has it changed so again uh, so i'll take for instance uh, section 80c which was originally introduced in 1967 Yeah, the most then, uh, uh, it was favorite section, right? <laughs> of tax bill has been a uh, yeah. favorite, yes. Uh, uh, and across uh, the board, not just for the salaried um, individuals. Yeah, uh, but it was replaced in 
where it was replaced by section 88 which was more a deduction from the taxes rather than a deduction from a uh, total income so that was key change but then again um, atc was brought back in its original form but the threshold again has remained static like we discussed the last time uh, at 150 for quite a while so that again uh, needs change uh, things like chapter 6 there are deductions that have been introduced over the years um, depending again on the kind of uh, investment that the government needs the kind of expenses uh, that should be encouraged to increase uh, consumption and so on so um that standard deduction as you mentioned was also a critical element uh, to it for the salaried employees where there has been a change over the years to it started at a very very low level it's come over the years uh, has been brought up but because again on on account of inflationary trends it needs to be re uh, rethought uh, about and uh, the uh, standard deduction also has to be increased but in the overall scheme of things what we understand is the government wants to go for a simplified regime of taxation It could be at lower rates without exemptions and deductions but uh, yes uh, it has to be made more palatable uh, for individuals so that they get a chance to compensate the loss for the exemptions and deductions that they would have to forego right right and the topic on surcharge it, you know this in itself takes a length of the whole podcast no as far as surcharge is concerned you know um there are specific reasons why surcharge uh, is brought into the uh, tax provisions uh, has been brought in by different uh, finance uh, ministers it could be on account of raising revenue uh, for a particular year uh, to address a particular economic condition uh, that they may be uh, such as a recession or an inflation during that uh, particular year uh, or if the revenue uh, needs to fund any stimulus measures uh, for a period of time they it also could be on account of uh, social and economic inequalities uh, that could come in and hence uh, application of a surcharge at the higher rates rather uh, than the lower rates so there could be several reasons but uh, generally when uh, those reasons are addressed uh, and taken care of and economy uh, comes back to normal one would expect that the surcharge is then removed or at least reduced but we haven't seen that trend much uh, but just at a high level as far as uh, surcharge is concerned it was i think the 1950s when surcharge was first introduced on income tax that was paid uh, we introduced a differential scheme of surcharge rates in 1718 where we had a differential rate of uh, 10 and 15% and minimum at maximum again uh, you know the differential tax lapse was made more pronounced in uh, 2021 where uh, income ranging from 50 lakhs to 1 crore was uh, at uh, 10% 1 to 2 crores was 15% 2 crores to 5 crores 25 and then over and above 5 crores was 37% so there in that particular year in 2021 uh, the differential was extremely pronounced which ultimately made the effective tax rate uh, 42.74 uh, so as such uh, these surcharge rates uh, impact individuals uh, differently uh, for higher income groups uh, it could uh, result in a significant increase in the tax liability that we've seen in the recent past understand but uh, there may not be any changes to the surcharge in this budget right tapte because um, nothing has been said nothing has been talked about it it's not much talked about but the expectations are there the 42% 42.74% uh, does not all go well for being you know at par with some neighboring countries as as i spoke about last time yeah right we don't want a flight of capital from the country as well mm. and uh, the higher income group has the capacity to reinvest in the economy in different ways and uh, it makes sense for uh, lowering that tax rate to enable that got it got it yeah so yeah we can continue talking about the mammoth the uh, income tax forever uh, let's put a full stop here for now thanks tapati always pleasure speaking to you thank you so much satya happy to be here yeah and listeners if you haven't already checked out our uh, 
episode on budget 2023 tax expectations with Tapti. You should do it right now. Uh, she talked about the anticipation on reducing the tax rate on um, income more than 10 lakh per annum, hopes on raising section 80C deduction limit, tweaks to capital gains taxation and many more. Um, that's all for now. Thank you so much. Thank you. That's all for now in this episode, listeners. If you have any queries or suggestions, you can reach out to me on Twitter. My handle is at Satya Sontanam, S-A-T-Y-A-S-O-N-T-A-N-A-M. Or you can also write to us at mintmoney at livemint.com. Bye-bye. This was a Mint production brought to you by HD Smartcast. HD Smartcast.